runners, have you set your sights on signing up for your first ultra marathon? You've raced a marathon distance and what's another couple miles, right? Well, those extra couple miles to that 50K distance huh, is actually a lot. Those extra few miles that you're going to be racing really start to add up in an ultra. There have been plenty of times in my life where I've needed to go out, test the waters, fail on my own, fall flat on my face to actually learn what was best for me in the time. So I really want you guys to tackle your first ultra marathon with confidence. I want you guys to have as few things to worry about as possible. So here's a couple of things I wish I knew before I started my first ultra marathon. For me, one of the hardest things that I had to go through and learn about when training for the ultra was actually getting enough nutrition and fuel in. When I was training for the marathon, my long runs would be maybe two hours max, maybe. So I would generally take one, maybe two gels, and those were like on my longest, longest runs. I really wasn't used to shoving food in my face. And with that ultra distance, you know, I don't mean to state the obvious here, but having proper fuel is the only way that you're going to get through the race. I remember the first run I ever did on the trails. It was when I first moved to San Francisco. I met up with some friends at San Francisco Running Company. We were gonna go on a 13 to 14 mile run. Now my road running brain says, eh, I don't really need fuel for that. That's totally fine. I can go off of the breakfast that I had and a little bit of water I had before that. But as we approached that hour and a half mark and we were still nowhere in sight of getting back to the starting place, I started to panic a little bit. I could feel myself starting to get that crashy feeling and I was just getting slow and like a little dizzy. Luckily, I had some great friends out there who shoved some food in my face and I felt so much better. Ultra distances are as much of a running race as they are an eating competition. During the beginning of an ultra or when you're going out for a training, whatever, you wanna stick with solid foods to begin with. So something like a bar, a sandwich, chips, whatever that might be, those more solid foods are gonna be easily digested at the beginning of your runs because your body hasn't really moved all the blood away from your stomach yet. But towards the end of those long runs, the end of the race, your body is going to really start to move the blood away from your stomach and your organs into your bigger working muscles like your legs. Anything you put into your stomach really doesn't want to be digested. So towards the end of those long runs, you want to go with your liquid calories, something like that spring. You see a lot of people drinking soda because it's quick, easy, sugary calories. But you want to test these foods out before you get to the race. Have fun with it. I tried out a lot of different foods. For me, when I ran my first 100 miler, I saw a packet of M&Ms and phew, I love me some good M&Ms, but I put them into my mouth and immediately spit them out because I was like, that was not what my body wanted at the time. I know they like this food, but it just didn't work for me. You may have different cravings at different times. So knowing a wide variety of foods that actually sit in your stomach well and that you can run on is gonna be super helpful down the road. Now, you need more food because you're going to be out there longer. So let's talk about that because of course, it's kind of obvious. You're like, yeah, I know Morgan, it's a longer race. Obviously I'm gonna be going longer, but you wanna worry about the amount of time that your legs are spending moving, right? When I was doing road racing and marathon training, I was very specific. I have to hit 17 miles today at eight minute on the dot pace. Ultra trail running, is not like that whatsoever. Don't get caught up staring at your watch being like, I am going so slow right now. That really kind of got into my head. It felt super frustrating and I really started to lose my confidence because I'm used to running pretty fast times when I'm out for my run. But remember that you're not on a perfectly flat course with maybe some rolly hills in it. You know, you have tons of different changing terrain. Every course and every long run route that you go on is gonna be so different. So whenever you go out to do your long runs, try to keep that in the back of your mind. Slow those paces down and really work on building that endurance. Those paces really don't mean anything. You need to go off of effort and how you're feeling. If you are struggling running a 15 minute mile up these steep hills, 
that is okay. You're still working hard. You're still moving forward. And when you're looking to choose your first race, or if you already have, make sure you look at the course elevation map. With those rollier runnable hills, I'm gonna do a lot more flat running, kind of like what you see here. Nothing super steep and hilly, and I can work on that leg turnover the whole time. I'm constantly moving at more of a run pace. Now for those super steeper, hillier courses, I'm probably gonna hit some stairs, like here. And practice that slow, grueling climb, just one foot after the other, trying to get up to the top. So you wanna adapt your training based off of what race you're training for. It's a little different each and every time. One of the hardest lessons I had to learn with ultra training was actually after my first ultra, being the days after the race. You know, in a road race, road marathon, you get very specific points of pain because it's so repetitive, right? So you're probably going to have very specific points in your body that are very painful after the race. But in trail running, you're using a lot of different muscles. You know, you're going uphill, downhill, jumping around rocks and roots and things like that. So you're just gonna have kind of this overall body soreness. So when I got done with my first ultra, I was like, oh, you know, I don't really feel that bad. I can jump right back into training. And I really, really wish I hadn't because I was not ready and I did way more harm to my body than I actually did good. So be sure to give your body the rest and recovery that it needs. I mean, you just ran an ultra marathon. You're allowed to eat some pizza, put your feet up on the couch and just chill. You really have to learn to love being out in the wilderness and being alone with yourself and your thoughts. And sometimes, honestly, it can be a little scary. You have these moments sometime of, wow, I am in the middle of nowhere. So finding a good group, a good accountability buddy is really helpful and something that helped me get through a lot of my training. It makes the time go by a lot faster and it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable. Solely just running during your buildup for an ultra isn't going to give you that strength in your legs to power you up some of these steep hills and to keep you moving through those longer distances. Runners should be training like an athlete. They shouldn't be doing just run specific workouts. And one of my good friends, Mr. Alex Ho, who's a run coach, a strength coach, who has man ran many different ultras, who has qualified for one of the most prestigious 100 mile races, Western States, actually partnered with us and made a whole video on different kind of strength training that you need to do for ultra training. So go ahead and check that out. I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, look, real talk for a second, this might get cut out of the video, I don't know, but me to you, you're just gonna have to be okay with going to the bathroom in the woods. You're eating a lot of weird food, you're out there for like four or five hours, six, seven, you're gonna have to go to the bathroom. Just mentally prepare for it, pack some toilet paper, you're good to go.